again, I, we have to keep pretending that, that we're doing this at a different time, but obviously with our diaries, we're doing them at the same time. Um, so another question from an active member um, was all, all to do with um, comp plans, rewards, asking specifically, is there a brilliant comp plan that repeatedly works? Uh, um, in my words, is there a silver bullet reward scheme that will get the best out of people consistently? Thing. Um, simple answer, no. All right, so thank you very much. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we've done. I'll finish there. Um, look, there, there, there isn't. It, when you when you know because we've done the stats and we've been around. There's not a huge difference in what one company pays over another company. Um, and we, we talk about, you know, passive employees being really happy with how their working environment, how much more is that worth to go somewhere else? And I think, you know, the biggest plus you can have is, is to enjoy your job, to be recognized at being good. Um, we, we've seen with commission schemes that they can have so many variations that sometimes they're too complicated for the staff to understand. And I think that's, that's a downside. Um, you need to be able to understand where you are where you are against everybody else, where you are in this market as well. But obviously, look, if you're bringing on new people, remove a threshold or give them higher comms for six months. Get those, because get those, you're all about run rate in, in recruitment. It's all you're about. You just want that incremental rise all the time. So get them up, get that momentum going, give them that boost to get started. And they will work that bit harder. I think one of the biggest things on top of comms that you can give your staff to make them feel valued is your time. What's he doing on my front page? Mr. Jameson, your wife is on line one. She needs to know if you... Meat. I'll send you a nice box of Christmas meat. Best I can do. Get out of here. If you give them your time, you're giving them information, knowledge, and experience that you've built up over all those years so that they can be better. And therefore, they can really take advantage of your commission scheme or your bonus scheme uh, or anything else that you've put together to incentivize them and i think at the moment it's tough to incentivize some markets are struggling some markets are flying there's a lot of winners and losers at the moment and you know you're a massive fan of ski trips and uh, big trips abroad and and whatever else it wasn't necessarily always my bag i was always trying to do more uh stuff in country but 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 this, again with the social capital but tough at the moment because you know you're, you're probably going to need some sort of digital passport or vaccinations um, to get into the Isle of Man. Well, I, I wasn't planning on doing the TT, but obviously I've shed a, bit of, <laughs> shed a few pounds and I've got a shirt for it. Um, look, there, there are some top tips around this and we will touch upon those, but I think one of the things that, that you've mentioned brilliantly was when you joined S3, well, why would you third your salary? And it wasn't to do with what your basic salary, it was the ability to earn. So, so if you think about, it's not how much you're going to get as a, what the commission scheme is, what your basic is, look around everyone and just smell. Does it smell of money? You smell that? What is that? What? What's that smell? A cologne? No. Opportunity. No, money. Oh, okay. I smell money. Can you, can you clock a, de a decent kettle in the corner? A watch on I mean. um are, are people dressed expensively are they spending a few quid does it look like it's a place where where there's six, six, success so you joined a business that there was money flying around it didn't care if it was, put you on a 10 grand basic everyone was basically very keen to tell you what they were earning right and then you were learning from brilliant people so that's worth its weight in gold versus an extra five grand on a basic salary Absolutely. I, I, I actually spoke about this yesterday um, when I was I was talking to a few consultants about things they need to be doing and competition internally. And, and I said, look, when I, when I joined S3, when I was a new consultant and I walked in and, and yes, you can smell success. Right. But but some were new, some were some were still making their way. Some were really highly successful. Um, but you went to the bar on a Friday night and everyone was drinking Moe and not Miller, whether they were on 10 grand or 110 grand, because the perception was reality. And then we had the endless fax paper where everybody's paid. I've never seen this before. Pay slips come across at the end of the month. Every, so if I earned one pound more than you because I'd done that much more business, it was my God given right to tell you how much better I was than you. Do you know, Ma Stanley probably makes more money in a year than you doing 10. What do you think of that thing, Scott? <laughs> Gosh. To the outside world, they might think that that was, wow, that's that you know that's a little bit aggressive, but, but it was done in a good way and it made everybody want to be a winner because that was your only scoreboard at the time. 
you know, yes, you can have runners out and whatever else, but as a business, you care about gross margin. And as a consultant, you care about your pay packet. And as long as those two things lined up and you were successful in that, you were a happy person. I remember doing my um, Liam Gallagher impression with two uh, American Express black cards on my eyebrows. Um, <laughs> the shame, the shame. Right, so, so a, f- a few tips to people. Um, you shouldn't have the same scheme on PERMAS contracts. If you dual desks, they both start from the bottom. So you don't top up. Um, otherwise, you're so overpaying. Um, yeah. If you've got contract um, runners and they go temp to perm, you just pay them ten percent, flat ten percent, so it doesn't again go up. Your contract scheme shouldn't have any thresholds because it's harder for, for people to get their contract runners up. But the scheme should actually be slightly less good than your perm. Um, we're having a delivery, so that'd be fun. Um, your on perm, you should definitely have a rollover. So rollover is a brilliant way to actually sort of uh, flatten out some of the um, the peaks and troughs within within um, your earnings. So then people aren't sort of cramming to get all the revenue in one month and, and getting dropouts and stuff like that. Um, always have wiggle room to pay for some incentives. And you're right that I do love all the ski trip stuff because when you do things like that and you build this esprit de corps, it makes your business incredibly sticky. The relationships that you have with your staff and the hat they have together, if one's going to leave, they're all going to have to leave. And that never really yeah. happens. So you're making it as sticky as possible, but don't make all of the um, incentives drink based. You know, just think in this day and age that people want to do different things and, and if we're just saying, well, we're going to go out and we're going to go out and go smash it. And we're, we're going to do um, 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 an, an Ollie Reeds and I'll see you when I see you. Uh, you've got families and children. That's just not appropriate these days. We're all, you know, the, the sector has grown up and its age dynamic has grown up. So do things which are which are appropriate, but still try and do some of the fun stuff. And the ski trips, you know, well, we're doing a ski trip for RDLC. I mean, it's, it's kind of important to us. Is there any other tip that you would give anyone about um, in terms of a reward scheme where you think the things that you did that might make you know, a difference to someone if they're thinking about, um, you know, a, a potential silver bullet? Um, I, we, we would have our commission scheme and uh, it would always be renewed every year in terms of this is the commission scheme for this forthcoming year. Now, not to say that we always changed it because we, 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 and we might have tweaked it because we'll look at performance, the market and all these types of things. So there might be some tweaks in there. But one of the things that worked really well and, and actually lends itself well to education, but can work in any market was, uh, especially for those consultants that have been there for some time was year on year improvement. So looking at your percentage gain in your run rate of where you were year on year and keeping you at this level, ending over above that, you were rewarded at 120% of what you would have normally earned. And as long as it was self-financing, i.e. within your budget, you as a business didn't really care, but it gave them points where they knew if they could push hard to hit, let's say this quarter, they got a bonus on that quarter. But as a business, you get that bonus given out on that quarter, but that actual run through will last until the end of the year because momentum's there. And it for me, as long as I could build momentum within my commission structure, within my business, people earned more, we did better as a business, everybody was focused on the right things. And it, it's good, you know, it's not just, I get the biggest margins, it's not about that. There's a fair and equitable rate for everybody. And I think actually, you know, in the UK, the markets are really, really, really competitive. We're very, very fairly priced compared to the rest of the world. In fact, recruitment's relatively cheap in the UK compared to anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Um, so you have to provide a better service. And to get that, you've got to get people who are incentivized to provide a good service. The outcome of that is a good business, good commission, good earnings. I, I'm just to caveat that. One size doesn't fit all. So if your average deal value in the UK is 8K, and your average deal value in America is 30K, you're going to be on a different set of targets because I still want one and a half to two deals from each of you. So your threshold is going to be bigger. But if you hit a bigger number, then all your thresholds go away but you're going to work hard for that extra money. You go hard mm-hmm. for the money. Um, your, um, your BD team should be based on um, wins and goals, not a percentage of everything they win. So you can set them you know, five at every quarter, you set them a different set of expectations. So the better they do, the more the target is going forward. Um, but the, the bigger the bonus that comes off of this. And the, the other caveat would be, we're looking at this 180 or alternative model. There's no reason why you're paying people on the fees they bring in you should be paying them for doing a deal. So it could be 
200, 300, 400, 400, 500, 500, 600, 600. And that's how you pay people yeah. because the, you know, they're literally, we should start to work towards people doing 10 deals a month. 10 deals a month. If you get the technology right, if we get the BD right, if we get the marketing right, if this is just as, and we got an outsourced people, oh my God, I'm getting on that that, that whole um, roadmap again. But if you get the, the, the activity going in, you get the candidates and all you're doing is submissions, well, if we're doing a good submission, that's not a recruitment job in my mind. That's that's a different relationship building gig. Um, so thank you very much, Dean. Brilliant as ever. Um, thank you, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Final word, Dean. Dean, have a go. <laughs> see you soon. See ya.